Welcome in this video. We are going to implement the awesome DP Match Prio paper. Uh, it's a really great paper because it allows to do super resolution in painting, uh, denoising without training. So, for example, with this image of a zebra, we want to um, to upscale it uh, to include to improve the resolution of that image. So, a standard approach is to train a neural network to perform uh, to perform that task. So, we train the neural network with supervised learning on a huge amount of data. So for example, this is this approach, so the, the image on the top uh, top right. Uh, on DP image prior, the approach on the uh, bottom right um, does not require training. At inference time, you run an optimization problem, so you run uh, an optimization on the fly, uh, and then you get your results. It's a bit like B-cubic on bilinear interpolation, although uh, B-cubic on bilinear interpolation do not require to solve an optimization problem. But they can be compared in the way that they do not require training. So, for example, in our uh, in this video, we are going to uh, to apply the DP match prior algorithm on that image. So, we have uh, this image of a snail that is uh, that is very noisy. There is a lot of noise uh, of uh, of white noise, and we want to get back this ground truth image. On although the neural network will never see in this ground truth image, and will never see other data. It, it is uh, a method that, that does not require training. It will be uh, able to remove this noise and to get back this image. So that's really awesome. Uh, let's dive into the implementation. In this video, I will really uh, focus on the implementation. I will not dive into the technical details uh, of it. Uh, maybe at, uh, sometimes in the code, I will uh, give more insight about the uh, what is working, uh, why this method is working. But the uh, idea is really to focus on the code. So I will put the link of this code in the description. If you use it and you work or if you find it useful, please leave a star so that other people can uh, discover this uh, repository. And also leave a thumbs up to this video. Uh, it really helps on subscribe for more content related to machine learning. So okay, if we dive into the implementation, we're going to use PyTorch for everything related to machine learning. And we're going to use a few other Python libraries, such as, for example, NumPy to load uh, the images. We are also going to use PIL uh, to load the images as well. TQDM to see the, uh, the progress during the optimization loop on uh, Matplotlib for plotting the results. So we can start by implementing the um, Although uh, this method does not require training, it's based off or uh, it's based on the neural network uh, that acts as a prior. Uh, I will not. Uh, I will give maybe more details about that later on. But yeah, the uh, this method is based on neural network, so we need to implement the neural network. The neural network architecture is explained uh, in the appendix. So it's a OOGLAS network. So uh, uh, a neural network that will first uh, that don't sample the image and then ups, uh, upsample it with uh, some skip connection. Okay, great. It's, so it's explained there. So we have this um, this architecture when the image will be done sampled, uh, then the, and then it will be upsampled. And in between there are skip connections. It's made up of three components: di, si, ui. So uh, let's get started and then let's implement di directly. So we can uh, implement the class D, which is a subclass of nn.module because it's a neural network. We take as input the number of input channel on nd on kd, which we can see uh, yeah there. The, the each block is made up of nd on uh, nd on kd, and then an architecture like, uh, like a whole uh, network architecture is made up of the different block with different uh, value for e, uh, for each block we uh, give a value of nd for example on kd. So, for example, in this case, for when we want to remove our JPEG artifact, the first uh, block will have uh, ND equal to 8 on key, uh, QD equal to 3. Okay, so we first have a convolution layer, then a down sampling layer, then a batch normalization, and then a leaky review. So we can implement that directly. So we, uh, we create a sequence of first a convolution layer, then a batch normalization. So in this case, you can see that we don't have an explicit done sampling, but by uh, setting the stride to do in this uh, convolution uh, block, we will uh, done sample the uh, spatial image. We will done sample the spatial resolution to two. Uh, so in some way, in only uh, using only one PyTorch block, we are uh, implementing those two uh, blocks. So the convolution on the done sampling. Then we have a batch normalization, uh, then a leaky review, and then again convolution, batch normalization, leaky review. And this is what we've implemented there. Uh, so the first part and then the second part, convolution, maturization, leaky review. So that's it for the uh, D block. Then we can, uh, yeah, we can of course implement the forward pass, which will just uh, smear the input text to the model. 
now we can move on to implementing the uh, order block which is s and then we can just uh, um, make a network by just combining them uh, yeah it's really like copy torch work you just have building blocks and then you put them together like lego um, so as for skip connection d was for down sample so we can create the constructor again with the input channel ns on ks so uh, d for the, uh, yeah each each module is a different uh, input name and dkd again for down sample and sks for uh, skip connection and then again we can create a sequence of convolution batch normalization leaky value um, oh yeah sorry so if we go there yeah the uh, skip connection block is very simple convolution batch normalization leaky value okay um, so now we can move on to the uh, upsampling block yeah first we need to implement the forward function and now we can finally move on to the upsampling block so again we will just create uh, again we have the input channel and you uh, ku and then we can uh, implement the sequence which is a batch normalization convolution 2d batch normalization convolution 2d batch normalization leaky value upsample on here there was a leaky value that i forgot um okay so if we uh, if look at that we see batch normalization convolution batch normalization leaky value again convolution batch normalization leaky value which is just what we've implemented and then the upsampling block uh, because we've done sampled the uh, the spatial resolution at the very beginning well, be, be, well, basically not at the very beginning, but for each downsampling block, we downsample the image. So each upsampling block is upsampling back the image. On, uh, yeah, basically the name suggested. Uh, on our basically that we have our three building block, we can uh, create an architecture by combining those blocks. Uh, so I think this this one that we're implementing, the the one from Figure Six. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five downsampling block on five upsampling block, and we have like two uh, skip connection blocks. So if we move on, uh, let's uh, double check that. Again, uh, we don't need to forget to uh, to override this forward function uh, from torch.nn.module. Uh, and now we can finally create the full model. So we can uh, just create the constructor and inside it will uh, in instantiate our uh, building blocks. So we have five uh, done some click block. Um, basically, uh, the kernel size is always equal to three and we have uh, his input, the number of input channel, and then the number of output um, output channel, yeah. Uh, and I think that yeah, that matches uh, that figure, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Yeah, that matches. Um, and so you can see we, uh, little by little, we always increase the, uh, the uh, number of input channel, and uh, at the same time, we decrease the spatial resolution by the by using those tone sampling layers. And then we can implement the upsampling layers. It will do the opposite. It will uh, start with a with a low spatial resolution and with a uh, um, high number of channel, and it will reduce the number of channel and increase the spatial resolution. And then with two skip connection layers, um, yeah, I think to add there. And then we can implement. Oh yeah, we don't need to forget there is a convolution out. So at the very uh, very end, uh, we uh, this upsampling block. So you. Uh, U1 will output something that is 8 uh, channel and then with this uh, output convolution that will convert that to an image that is 3 channel and now we can implement the forward function so first we don't sample the, uh, the input x so uh, yeah little by little we uh, we smear it uh, through the uh, sequence of non sampling layers we uh, sometimes we need to uh, compute those, those uh, skip connections basically the value uh, after they go to the uh, yeah, to the skip connection blocks and then once it's done we can uh, do the upsampling on uh, when there is a uh, skip connection we can concatenate, concatenate uh, the output h with the uh, output of the skip connection in that case so we want our uh, we want the uh, our the, the spatial resolution of our image to be multiple of, of some uh, some value i think it's uh, either i think it's four or maybe uh, uh, maybe 16 so basically here I've hard coded some value to make sure that the uh, well basically I need this uh, the output of the skip connection to have the same spatial resolution as the uh, as the size of h. So in this case it's a bit hard coded. It's not the best way to do it. So uh, the best way would be to compute that automatically. So we are cropping the image to make sure it has the same shape as h. So maybe if you are interested you can try uh, basically just do it. If you want to contribute to open source do it like Maybe maybe it's not the right word, but kind of is a, of homework, and then make a pull request on the repository 
so that other people will enjoy your solution. So once this is done, uh, we can return the, uh, we, we have the, the hidden uh, value after the last upsampling block. We can uh, smear that to the convolution, uh, to the output convolution, and then apply the uh, sigmoid activation function because we're producing an image and we want the, uh, the uh, ARGB value to be between zero and one. So once this is done, uh, basically now we, uh, for now we've done nothing related to deep image prior. We just implemented the network architecture. So maybe it was not the most interesting. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Um, but now we are going to move on to implementing the deep image prior. And you've seen that I've implemented it in the main, uh, in the main function. Maybe it was not the, the most uh, the smartest way to do things, but at least uh, it shows that it's very, uh, simple to implement and very short you will see that in maybe about 10 lines of code it will be implemented so for this uh for this code the main uh, difficulty was really impl impl implementing the one network architecture so we can uh, instantiate the model and then create an optimizer to optimize its parameters uh, we are using adam with a learning rate that is pretty high uh, 1e minus 2. Uh, we can load the image so the snail image uh, this time i did things uh, better than uh, online uh, 86 on 87 I, I compute uh, I automatically uh, resize the image so that it's uh, the spatial resolution is a multiple of 32 which is required by our architecture and then I'm, pro I'm processing the image making sure that the pixels are between 0 and 1 then we're creating a corruption uh, and cor a corrupted image so basically this is what the neural network will see it will not see the image so the snail image it will just see the, the corrupted image so the one with a lot of white noise that I've shown uh, at the beginning of this video. Um, basically, this neural network acts kind of kind of as a as a generator. So it, it's taking a latent uh, latent variable as input, so z, uh, and basically with g of z that produced an image. So we can uh, call that x hat is equal to g of z. Uh, and basically, we want to find uh, to optimize uh, the parameters of the neural network so that the produced image uh, matches the corrupted image. Um, if we are, well, well let, let's dive into the implementation and then I will give some insights about uh, about, um, about why it's working. So we can iterate over a number of epochs. We'll uh, iterate over roughly um, 10K, uh, 2K epochs, um, so the 2400 epochs. So we create the prediction. So we send the, uh, the noise Z to the model. And then we compute the MSC loss between, between the prediction and the corrupted image. And then we do uh, one step of gradient descent. So we optimize the weights of the neural network. So of course, if we uh, let uh, that run for uh, infinity, let's say that we multiply number of epochs by uh, 1000, uh, at some point, the predicted image will look just like the corrupted image because the loss will, uh, will drop. At some point, will be close to zero and the predicted image will be close to the corrupted image. But all the idea behind the deep image prior paper is that uh, basically the uh, neural network will act as a prior by itself. Uh, and if we uh, st stop training uh, in, um, early enough, so because uh, this neural network is, uh, is biased to produce like natural looking images, uh, uh, there is like a trade off between the prior that is. Uh, uh, the prior made up by the neural network on its initialization on uh, the uh, likelihood, so this objective. So basically, there is like a, a trade-off. So at some point, like the this loss will be uh, will drop, and the prior will uh, uh, will drop as well. Um, so really, basically, our, our initialization of the neural network will will be such that the image we produce look like natural image, so uh, an image that looks a bit like this. Uh, and then there is also the, the likelihood that makes this image, these natural looking images, to look like the input image. So if I stop training quite uh, early enough, because I have a prior um, that makes such that the produced image look like natural images, I will have an image that looks like this one, but that also looks like a natural image. But of course, if I keep training for, uh, for longer, at some point, this image will degrade and look exactly like this one. Uh, because the prior will uh, vanish because we are the prior uh, is related to the initialization of the neural network so uh, long, long story short if we uh, stop training uh, enough uh, with an image that is at that uh, at, at, at one time uh, uh, looks like this image on that uh, on the other end also look like a natural image so uh, yeah if we just train for uh, 
for enough epoch but not too too much uh, at the same time we get this prediction so something that really looks like the ground truth uh, even though we have no access to the ground truth uh, so that's really the idea behind the deep image prior paper but i suggest that we've read at it and uh, i'm sure it will be uh, much more clear than my explanation uh, and then we can just plot the results um, and that's it. So really uh, very simple implementation, the uh, optimization uh, or basically the uh, deep image prior algorithm is just about 20 lines of code. So very simple. Um, of course, we, we needed to first implement this neural network that took a bit uh, more time. So really uh, I really hope you liked this video. If it was, please give a thumbs up. It's really helpful and subscribe for more content related to machine learning. Thank you.